In a world full of people, only someone to fly isn't that crazy. That's, that's how I look at it. From a very early age, many of us seem to want to fly. But as adults, some of us lose that desire. Many may attend balloon festivals just because of the pageantry and drama, but others may be coming to experience vicariously something they're afraid to do themselves. Although balloons don't convey the complexity of fixed-wing aircraft or helicopters, they're still exacting and potentially unforgiving machines which require careful setup and attention to detail to ensure the safety of the pilot and the passengers. Barry is the owner of some of the largest balloons flying, including the tallest balloon in the world today that is actually certified for flight, a scale model of the space shuttle. Patriot is uh, the space shuttle balloon. It's the tallest flying balloon in the world today. It's over 190 feet tall with a wingspan of 115 feet. It was built in 2003 and it was mostly built at the time that uh, Space Shuttle Columbia turned into an ember. Um, so it's a commemoration to both Challenger and Columbia and it's been traveling around the world since 2003 and this is uh, only the second time it's ever flown in its own home base of Chester County. Balloonists are first and foremost enthusiasts, and no one more so than Patriots pilot, Christine. The story for me began 10 years ago, pretty much to the day. Uh, 10 years ago, I was living near Solberg Airport, which is in Reddington, New Jersey, and we hold one of the world's largest balloon festivals there. Uh, typically around 90 to 100 balloons, special shapes, and uh, up to 150,000 people come through the gates to enjoy the balloons and the music festival. So 10 years ago, I was a spectator like anybody else, and uh, I don't like being a spectator. I want to go where the action is. So I said, hey, how do I go over there where the balloons are? And they said, well, you can come over and crew. So that got me through the gate. A couple years later, I met a young pilot, 19 years old, and uh, I helped him that weekend. And he said, hey, you know, I'm going to be inflating the world's largest hot air balloon in a couple of days. It's the space shuttle, Patriot Space Shuttle. Would you like to come and help out? Completely new to ballooning. I said, sure. Turns out what was in this bag kind of changed my life. But not everyone finds their bliss in piloting. Crew Chief Jeff loves his job tending some of the biggest flying balloons in the world and keeping them flying. With decades of experience, he's the kind of man you want keeping you safe in the air and meeting you when you land. How you doing? My name's Jeff Wilson. I'm a crew chief for uh, Barry Delibrio and the uh, Space Shuttle Balloon, as well as their flagship. Been crewing around 27 years. Um, I've crewed for many different balloons over that time. A lot of things have changed, but some have not. Uh, we still chase the balloons, but the technology has gotten a lot different. We use GPSs now to where we used to lay a map out in the van, and we used to do everything manually. So that's one of the big changes and differences. Uh, the rigs and safety has gotten a lot better over that time. Um, the rigs are a lot safer than they used to be. Um, but still, it's a lot of fun to do a long time. Some people ask me why I never became a pilot. I love the chase. I love going along the ground, chasing the balloon, taking photographs of it. Just as much fun being up there as the pilot, but without the risk. So it is a lot of fun, but doing a long time. Even with an experienced crew, balloons like Patriot just need so many people to set it up that inexperienced volunteers are often used. Christine, the pilot, got her start as just such an ad hoc volunteer recruited at an event on the spot to help with the balloon. Lou is an experienced crew member who was on the staff at AAPEC Sunrise as well as directing the crews of volunteers in setting up Patriot. I'm Lou Powell and I'm one of the crew with AAPEC Sunrise. We fly the Space Shuttle Patriot, the uh, Lighthouse, which is a red, white, and blue lighthouse, and we fly the 
flag USA flag one uh, America one actually and we do uh, rides locally here in the area in Chester Springs and Chester County and we fly also Larry the Phoenix which is the balloon that we're setting up here right now do tethers with this event. Lou spoke of tethering and that is all the team was doing. A tethering event is where the festival organizers want the impact of the balloon's presence for the entire event which would of course be lost if the balloon flew away. But make no mistake, a hot air balloon as large as Patriot generates a lot of lift, even when just tethered. For that reason, all the preparations of the balloon itself are the same as for a full flight and require just as much time and thought on the part of the crew leaders. Here Lou puts it in perspective as he discusses the specifications of Patriot. Alright, so this is the Space Shuttle Patriot that you've been seeing all the pictures about. The material alone on this unit, the whole 198 feet of it vertically, weigh 995 pounds. Keeping in mind that Patriot is relatively lightweight and has a huge surface area, winds are even more of an issue than with smaller balloons. Barry talks about the issue of winds and ballooning. We have a little bit of wind issue right now, and uh, but that happens during the course of the day. A lot of people don't understand that balloons fly first thing in the morning at sunrise and close to sunset because those are the calmest times of the day. In early ballooning, which was a long, long time ago in the 1960s, they didn't know that. And when they first started sport ballooning, there was a basic rule. For every one hour, hour of flight, there was two hours of repair time because people would fly into trees and houses and things like that. And they realized after a while, the calmest points were sunrise and sunset. So as we're waiting for the sun to die down, we're going to be set up to do our little tether here. So far, you've seen a bit of the process of setting up Patriot, including unrolling from the storage bag and spreading the balloon. Once Patriot is properly laid out, the first stage of inflation is accomplished with a pair of eight horsepower gasoline engine driven fans. Hot air inflation comes much later. Here, some crew hold open the mouth of the balloon envelope so that the fans can fill the balloon with cold air. As the balloon begins to rise, crew enter to connect rigging, which reinforces the balloon's shape and strength, and seams are checked to make sure everything is properly sealed. Once the balloon has the internal rigging properly configured, the balloon is blown up to near net shape with the fans. Finally, the balloon begins to be inflated with the burners. The pilot controls this process in the same manner they would in the air, but in some respects, it's more critical. The balloon can only be heated so quickly, and care must be taken not to damage the fabric nearest the flame. The flame is pulsed on and off to ensure the temperature rises steady and nothing is damaged. When Patriot finally begins to lift, though, it is a handful. Teamwork shown here is a part of the story, but others manage top tethers to help control the lift and angle of Patriot as it starts to really lift. As you can see, Patriot really wants to fly, and it takes a village to keep it on the ground and under control. So, as night began to fall, Patriot rose and neared the fulfillment of its mission for the Chester County Balloon Festival. During the day, many balloons were inflated, and some even carried paying passengers. But the final event of the night was to be the balloon lighting. By running the burners of the balloons in a slightly different way, a more luminous flame can be created which dramatically lights the balloons from inside. As the night grew darker, the effect was even more intense. I don't think anything short of an IMAX presentation could quite do justice to Patriot's huge bulk lit from within. And so, the long day ended for the spectators. But Patriot's tired crew would still labor in a field, in the dark, as the spectators left to go to their homes. The 2013 Chester County Balloon Festival appears to have been a success that was attended by folks from all walks of life. It was held in a new location that was quite out of the way and was a beautiful, spacious venue in gently rolling hills. We'll end with Lou's wife Lynn, who also crews with AAPEX Sunrides and who was appreciative of the owners of Plantation Field. I want to thank Plantation Field for opening the field to the balloonists, and I want to thank the landowners for embracing us, and we love this wonderful open space that you can see behind me. As a lifelong resident in this area, I appreciate the open space, and I thank everybody for maintaining it and allowing all to enjoy it.
entropic remnants. <laughs> <laughs>